Alexander the Not-So-Great Alexander the Great, tutored by Aristotle, undefeated in battle, creator of one of the largest empires in history, and one of the best leaders the world has ever seen. And all this by age 32. Yeah. If you are forever immortalized in history as Alexander the Great, then you must have done something pretty good. But although Alexander the Great achieved some incredible feats, he was also known as foolhardy, arrogant, and prone to fits of rage. Let's look at eight reasons Alexander the Great might be Alexander the Not-So-Great, after all. Number 1. Thebes Today, Gone Tomorrow Thebes was one of the greatest and most influential cities in ancient Greece. Rival to Athens and home to the legendary Oedipus, Thebes was a thorn in the side of Alexander the Great. Although conquered by his father, Philip II of Macedon, years earlier, Thebes remained reluctantly under rule at best. When the people of Thebes heard from high-ranking Athenian politician Demosthenes that Alexander had reportedly died at the siege of Pelium, they immediately revolted against local Macedonian rule, hoping to overthrow them before a new leader was appointed. Upon learning of the revolt, the very much alive Alexander immediately marched to Thebes, where he successfully retook the city. If the story ended there, then Alexander would have come off looking like a great military leader. But his actions after his success showed the cruel side of his power. He wanted to make an example of Thebes for the other Greek city-states. So, he killed all the men remaining in the city and enslaved the women and children before burning the entire city to the ground as an example of what would happen if you defied his rule. The great city of Thebes was destroyed, except for the house of poet Pindar, who had written verses praising Alexander's ancestors. Number 2. Destroy and Conquer Thebes wasn't the only city destroyed by Alexander. Persepolis was another victim of Alexander's excessive nature. 150 years earlier, King Xerxes I of Persia invaded Greece, burning down towns, cities, and the Athenian Acropolis as he went. It was the burning down of the Acropolis that ignited a rage in ancient Greeks that would not be forgotten. That's why, in an alleged act of vengeance, Alexander retaliated in a drunken rage, raising the city of Persepolis to the ground. The fact that he had now conquered and owned the city apparently had little relevance in Alexander's drunken mind. Number 3. Alexander the Drunk As you may have already guessed from his destruction of an entire city in a fit of drunken rage, Alexander was an alcoholic. Although he was reportedly a slender build, Alexander would consume vats of alcohol more fitting for someone twice his size in an attempt to match the pace of his officers and show no weakness in front of them. A lot of his subsequent rages and military decisions were made as a result of his alcoholism such as the downfall of Persepolis. And, in the end, alcohol was ultimately Alexander's greatest downfall. Although historians today aren't sure, one of the suspected causes of Alexander's death is excessive drink. Ancient Greek philosopher Plutarch claimed that in his last days, Alexander spent a day and a night drinking excessively before falling ill from a fever that eventually claimed his life. Number 4. Fits of Rage it was no secret that Alexander was prone to fits of rage that his alcoholism certainly didn't help. And it was his drunken rage that led to one of Alexander the Great's greatest mistakes. Clytus the Black was a commander of the Greek cavalry in Alexander's army and a close friend who once saved his life at the Battle of Granicus in 334 BC. One day, six years later in 328 BC, Alexander made a surprising announcement during a drunken feast that would change their friendship forever. Instead of staying by his side, Clytus was to take 16,000 defeated Greek mercenaries north to fight in Central Asia, cutting off his direct line of communication to the king. Furious at his orders, Clytus struck back and the two quarreled, with Clytus snapping that Alexander was not the true heir of the Macedonians, as all of his achievements were actually his father's. Alexander responded in rage, demanding a dagger to fight Clytus, but well used to his fits, his guards stayed quiet and out of the way, not wanting to get in the middle of a fight between friends. 
With his request ignored, Alexander angrily threw an apple at Clytus's head as others tried to hustle him from the room. Unfortunately, Clytus decided he had to get in the last word, and it was indeed the last word he ever said, as when returning to hurl more insults at Alexander, Alexander grabbed a nearby javelin and with an almighty throw speared Clytus through the heart. Alexander awoke the next morning filled with regret and probably a wicked hangover. Number 5. The Hyphasis Mutiny Although Alexander's ruthlessness is part of what has made history look upon him as a brilliant military leader, it was also something that showed his lack of care for others around him. One example where he pushed his people too far resulted in the Hyphasis Mutiny. It was 326 BC and Alexander had just successfully won another portion of ancient India in the Siege of Sagala. Intent on world domination, he ordered his troops to march further into Asia. But Alexander the Great gave absolutely no thought to the people in his army when making his orders. By now, his troops had been fighting and marching for eight years with no end in sight. They were weary and battle-tired, their clothes and armor worn down from the continual plod onwards. This, coupled with 70 days of heavy wind and rain with no end in sight, was the final straw. His troops mutinied, refusing to go on another step. Surprisingly, Alexander relented and agreed to turn back. But if Alexander truly was the great military leader we see him as today, then surely he should have thought of his troops sooner. Number 6. Alexander the God? There are arrogant people. And then there's Alexander the Great. A man who founded 70 cities and then named them all Alexandria after himself. A man so convinced of his own supremacy that he believed he must be literally descended from the gods. This was thanks in no small part to his mother, Olympias, who claimed a bolt of lightning struck her womb on her wedding night. As time grew, so did his arrogance and belief in his divine right to rule. He later claimed to be a descendant of Heracles and Achilles, and, in the last years of his life, seriously considered himself to be the son of Zeus, not of Philip II. Were these the claims of a troubled mind? Or was Alexander simply so arrogant, he literally thought of himself as godly? Number 7. World Domination It is apparent that Alexander the Great was a man who lived to fight, not fought to live. So great was his desire for conquest and battle that when he had invaded all known lands, legend said he wept, for he had no more worlds left to conquer not knowing about the existence of China further to the east. Such megalomaniac desires suggest that towards the end of his life, Alexander may have been suffering from delusions of grandeur, caring more for his own power than for the nation he ran. Number 8. Alexander's Legacy It seems Alexander the Great's quest for world domination was less about laying the groundwork for an empire and more about stroking his own ego. It became apparent that Alexander simply didn't care what happened to the lands or the people he conquered after his death when he made no attempts to set up any form of government or name a successor. He simply claimed that his kingdom would belong to the strongest and that he foresaw a great funeral contest of himself. Not the words of a man who cares what happens when he is gone. Good or bad, Alexander the Great remains a fascinating figure in history a multifaceted, talented young man whose arrogance and propensity for a drink eventually overtook his keen military mind, leading to his ultimate downfall. Like this video? Don't forget to subscribe for more and check out our Day in the Life of series quickly before Alexander drinks it all.